In today's crypto project updates, we're going to take a look at Ontology Engine and also Chainlink, which I haven't covered in quite some time. Are you curious to find out what are the latest updates that these projects have to bring us and how have they been progressing so far? Of course, I'll also be taking a quick look at the price on CoinMarketCap all before that. So let's get straight in. This video has been sponsored by BitYard. I would like to thank them very much for sponsoring this channel. Please trade with caution and watch the following video. And it's time to check the markets on CoinMarketCap to see how the prices have been doing in the last 24 hours. So Bitcoin is trading at just under 9,000 as we can see here. Uh, it's up 0.47%. Now it is very, very volatile. So these numbers can change in a matter of seconds too. Uh, Ethereum is trading at $206. So the thing is with, with Bitcoin now before the halving, it continues to just pump upwards, right? Even though it went to like 9,400, it went back down to like 8,600. Now it, it's coming back up, retesting the 9K area, right? So the halving is actually going to happen on the 12th of May. If you're new to crypto and you don't already know, that is in six days from now uh, for me doing this video. So that would be pretty interesting to find out uh, how it's going to impact the price. And if you don't know what the Bitcoin halving is, technically speaking, uh, do check out the video in the description that I've done on the Bitcoin halving explaining what it actually means and how it could impact the price. Uh, now let's check out the NEO and that's trading at $9. So it's holding quite well and ontology under 50 cents or 47.6. Like I was saying before in earlier videos, ontology is going to struggle to break that barrier, the resistance line around the 50 cents area, which has accumulated for a long time across the year since 2018 when it first dumped that price. And since then, of course, that was a really good support area, which now turned into resistance. So it is a bit of a concern there. Uh, but let's look at the biggest winners and that's Digibyte and Status and the biggest losers are Hyperion, Unibright and Hive, uh, which was listed on Binance and it pumped like crazy and of course it did pull back, right? So we can see that in the chart here too. Uh, so that's it from today's uh, crypto prices. Let's move on and talk about the news. Hey, if this is the first time we're meeting, my name is Claudio and this is Crypto Chain, the channel where I do crypto news, reviews, tutorials and interviews. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, click subscribe and enable notifications to not miss the next video I upload that may interest you. Ontology have got an interest in the DeFi technology. Imagine that, who would have thought? They're going to try and combine their digital identity with the DeFi space using a mobile wallet. So hence this new partnership that they've announced. So Ontology joins Celo Alliance for Prosperity to Accelerate Financial Inclusion. Now you may be asking yourself, what's Celo Alliance? Well, Celo Alliance were launched in March 2020, so only recently by the Celo Foundation. Now, existing members include Andresin Horowitz, who's a Coinbase Ventures worker. And that is important, right, because we've got Coinbase backing Ontology, right? So that is huge, especially because we knew that Ontology were supposed to be listed on Coinbase when they announced it back in August 2019. They said they're looking at potential new listings, which include Ontology too in that list. We haven't heard back from them since. So hopefully sometime in 2020, we could see Ontology on Coinbase. But again, it is speculation on my side. We don't know for sure until it's officially confirmed. It's just something to keep in mind. When Coinbase say they're looking at potential listings, they usually do them at some point. Now, with an additional 23 new members also announced today, and I'm not going to read all of their names. You can find them all here. Again, you can find the links to these articles too that I'm going to be discussing in today's video. But commenting, 
Andy Jai, the co-founder of Ontology, said that the purpose of Celo is to empower anyone with a smartphone to access digital currencies and ultimately foster a fairer financial system resonates strongly with our values at Ontology and we're thrilled to be joining the Alliance. We look forward to collaborating with other like-minded industry leaders to offer our Ontology ID solution with a view to jointly exploring the identity-based DeFi applications built on Celo, such as decentralized universal basic income or decentralized credit scores. So that is interesting here because we know countries like the UK uh, do focus a lot on credit scores. So we may see decentralized credit scores in the near future. Now, Celo is an open blockchain platform that makes financial tools accessible to anyone with a mobile phone. It can be leveraged to build an ecosystem of powerful mobile applications, ranging from easier cash transfer programs to peer-to-peer -peer lending, international remittances to digital assets and wallets. So imagine that you're gonna have DeFi on your mobile phone is just like when you're uh, getting a loan or a personal loan, right? Not, not necessarily a mortgage loan, but a personal loan from your mobile app in 24 hours or so. You will be able to do that with uh, with cryptocurrency still pretty soon using the DeFi technology. Now, Celo's digital currency, which is the Celo dollar, it's a stable coin, provides people all over the world with a stable, secure, inexpensive and easy way to move money and engage in financial activities that were previously inaccessible to them. Now, Ontology will also be adding Celo to the Onto Wallet app for users to easily store and send Celo. So that is interesting because the Onto Wallet app is now becoming like a one-stop shop for all things crypto. Now all the all these different dApps like the blockchain games from Ethereum, blockchain games from Ontology are all in this dApp. So you can do pretty much a lot of things on there. It's still uh, yet to grow, right? They're still they're still yet to they still yet to add quite a few more dApps on there. But we have seen quite quite a large amount. Unfortunately, a lot of them are in Chinese though. So until we get some which are going to be translated, it's not really going to be too tempting for people outside of China at the moment, or at least people that don't speak Chinese. But nevertheless, people are still using Onto, right, for staking purposes, for transferring, for, you know, easy, easy transfer, basically. If you want to make any kind of transaction or stuff, you just scan that QR code, you have your digital identity there, so it is pretty cool. But in terms of dApps, I think that they do need to focus more on the English side. I think they're lacking a bit on that uh, from what I've seen when I was actually checking out Onto. I haven't actually done a review on Onto, but at some point I will be doing that. So this is pretty much it, just to keep it short, do check out the rest of this article if you're interested uh, from the ontology side. But next, we're going to be talking about uh, Engine Coin. Uh, and just before we do that, I just want to quickly let you know about this consensus um, that is going to take place from May 11 to May 15th, starting at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So it is free and is virtual, right? Especially now with coronavirus, everybody's staying indoors. Uh, so you can register and there are a lot of interesting speakers, including people from Ontology too, uh, who are going to be speaking at this event. But we've got Akon, uh, who's going to be a speaker. We've got the Winklevoss twins as well from Gemini. We've got CZ. Uh, so quite a lot of people are going to be speaking here. Uh, people that are known in the space, 5,000 plus attendees, 150 plus speakers. So the press as well is going to be there. Five days of content. Imagine it's free. I mean, coronavirus in a way has been good for some people in terms of conferences and stuff because this kind of enforces the fact that uh, you need to do this virtually. And, and it's good because everybody all over the world can take place without having to actually travel and pay for that very expensive ticket. So do consider registering to this uh, if you're interested. Uh, by the way, uh, again, you can find this link here. It's on the coindesk.com website. I'm not getting anything. Don't, don't imagine that it's free, right? I'm only saying it because I saw this uh, on a tweet from Ontology while I was checking the latest news. But next, next let's talk about Engine. Now, I really wanted to cover Engine's latest news because this specific tweet has caught my attention. Now, I don't check all these different projects on a regular basis because there are just too many out there that I'm interested in. But this specific one really caught my attention. I just wanted to share it with you in case you're not following Engine on a regular basis either, right? So this is from the 30th of April, but there's an ERC-20 to ERC-20 token swaps that are available via the Kyber network in the Engine wallet. So what's interesting is that the Kyber network, which is the decentralized exchange aspect of it, which is like the atomic swap functionality, has been integrated into Engine wallet. And I will probably do a review on this because I did do a review on Engine wallet. I have reviewed it. Do check it out. You can see how you can actually use the wallet on the mobile phone. I have done it on the mobile phone directly. 
so do check that out i may do another review uh, on the kyber network functionality so this is actually really important because this shows us that engine are not only collaborating in terms of partnership and promises but they're actually delivering so this is the most important aspect of a collaboration is to deliver not just say that you're going to collaborate but not actually progress with uh, with your project in any way in terms of that collaboration right it's not going to help anybody now apart from that we've also got some more updates on engine uh, such as the with the games so um, the igdb.com um, game i'm not sure i think that that's actually a platform that they're using this is an open source database which offers gamers a place to discover and get notified of new and upcoming games from all the platforms all you need is a twitch login uh, players feel invested at home in their game uh, do as uh, alter verse game did and enable extensive customization of their environmental experience so hence now with coronavirus more gamers are going to be home of course and they're playing and uh, an engine are actually doing pretty well in in these moments right because we know that other projects are suffering now especially the travel companies but um, engine being you know focusing on games only it's like poof this is like the best time for them right now because all the people are inside the house even people that used to play games before and didn't have the time will now find the time to play games so hence why engine is doing really well in these moments and uh, we're getting more games like so we've got space misfits now that's in pre-alpha the demo is available i have spoken about space misfits before uh, in an older video uh, now hopper nft weapons in buildings uh, will have to be updated uh, reflecting the level up so basically they're just talking about different updates here for the different games that are on engine so i've got this other game here kingdom carnage so so many games are being developed on engine it's amazing some of them are really simple to develop right you may think you know this one is like doesn't look really complex right i, I can understand it takes a lot of development time but it is easier to design compared to a to one which is using cryengine 3 which has awesome graphics right like dissolution for example which i have reviewed on this channel as well uh there's some collaboration going on and what's other interest the other interesting uh, part here is the blockchain integration for minecraft and wordpress right so we've got this company here hunters uh, of rio which have actually found a way to integrate into minecraft right to integrate blockchain technology and to integrate engine with minecraft so that is interesting because now we've got the ethereum 1155 assets directly through the website and they can be used on the minecraft servers so we're seeing this more and more and i was as i was seeing in every interview i had where i was discussing blockchain games I do think that blockchain games are going to be one of the first uh, to kind of generate that mass to trigger that mass adoption with blockchain technology right and even with cryptocurrencies because you're going to see nfts being used and it'll only be a matter of time before even gamers will be using cryptocurrencies when they'll be playing all these games where they'll be rewarded for those rare items that they're getting right and they're selling and on the market vice versa right so hence why i'm so bullish on blockchain games and i think they have a bright future ahead of them we're already seeing this take off uh, but unfortunately many gamers out there still don't know a lot about blockchain technology so they kind of stay away from them but when they will and when they learn how to use them and when they find out that they can get paid for playing games the games they love that's when we'll see the real adoption take place in my personal opinion so that was it from engine let's talk about Chainlink. Now, as I was saying earlier, because I don't follow all the projects very, very closely, I do check them from time to time. I know it's been some time since I've checked Chainlink. I have done a review on Chainlink on this channel, so hence why I'm checking the updates. I'm only checking updates for projects that I have personally reviewed, so then I, I have more knowledge about them than I would have if I wouldn't have reviewed it, right? Now, Tezos is integrating Chainlink. I have done a review on Tezos too. And what's interesting is that every project out there well not every but all the major projects out there are integrating Chainlink because of the power of oracles the power of oracles is really really important right so we're going to see all these different blockchains using Chainlink to bring the data from the outside world into the blockchain technology so that is awesome right we're seeing the power of smart contracts being used here so this just shows you once again it reinforces the power of a project even in a bear market Chainlink is performing extremely extremely well it doesn't matter what bitcoin maximalists say it doesn't matter right it has been performing very very well uh, and and it just shows you once again with all these integrations that are taking place with Chainlink, 
it's just like every time i'm checking chilling all i see is positive news right these guys are just like firing out the, the content with all the positive news all every every post is something positive with them right so that is amazing even this right at the community's request or making the chain link themed backgrounds that we've been using during our meetings and virtual events accessible to everyone let us know what you think and feel free to share any additional chain link inspired backgrounds so this is the thing i just wanted to kind of cover this with chain link and kind of talk talk a little bit about it is like it's one of those projects that are not just making promises but are actually delivering I remember there was some thought back in the day a couple of months ago with Chainlink because the team were selling the tokens on the market and, and some, some content creators were fudding them. They were like, I don't trust them. Uh, people that do that, well, think about this, right? Well, okay, I can understand they've done it. They've hurt some investors, but they have to survive too, right? They've got a whole team to feed. You got you to gotta bring food on the table, right? How, how else are you going to make money? Okay, I can understand you're making money from partnerships sometimes, but not always the case, right? So they don't always pay them, right? So sometimes it's just a partnership, right? They help each other. So, uh, I mean, you got to make money somehow, right? So hence, hence why maybe that actually happened and, and the team have the right to sell. When is their time when they get their tokens unlocked? They don't have to hold. They can't sell. So just try to understand that, right? Hence why I was talking about tokenomics in another video I did earlier. Tokenomics are very important because if you understand how they work, then you know what to expect. You know that at some point, this amount of supply which is left, which is like 20% or 30% or whatever, depending on the blockchain, is going to get dumped on the market. No matter how you look at it, it's unavoidable, okay? It's unavoidable. So just get that clear. Uh, but um, anyway, just to clarify this tune in today at 12 p.m eastern time this was posted eight hours ago um so it's for wednesday which is for today actually uh, depending on where you are in the world in my case today is the sixth so wednesday at 4 30 p.m eastern daylight time uh, for a main stage presentation uh, that's going to take place uh, with the ceo sergey nazarov from chainlink so yeah i mean it's just it's amazing so many companies so many blockchain technologies out there uh and and they don't really have like a big competition right we've got band protocol now which are kind of competing with Chainlink, but they're still quite new uh they don't have the market cap of Chainlink, but Chainlink have already built those roots now so it's going to be tough to have real competition and hence with this with the tezos integration this is amazing because we know that tezos are really decentralized they anybody can run a node on tezos you don't need to ask for permissions and this is one of the things that kind of um, disappoints me with ontology in the fact that you need to apply to become a node operator you need to get approval from them you need to fill in an application form whereas with tezos anybody can do it right anybody can do it so this is one of the things that i wanted to reinforce Chainlink is that type of project that will just have to be used by well not have to be used but it's because it has no equal at the moment you know blockchains are actually using it it's as simple as that right they're integrating it they need oracles right to get that data across uh, as, as they're partnering with other blockchain technologies out there so that was it from today's video uh, let me know what you think in the comments below and don't forget to like and follow if you haven't already subscribed i would very much appreciate it take care of yourself and i'll see you in my next video take care bye bye